We are continuing on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. You can see I'm on location again at my parents' house. I'll be here tomorrow as well. Uh, we are working on the winter flower block of the Splendid Sampler 2. So this is all English paper piecing. And we got the, all the templates cut out and we got our first little piece put together last night. So I'm hoping we can make maybe two of these tonight. We'll see. I think we can do speedy tonight now that I got it kind of figured out again after not doing it for a little while. Uh, so thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, I'm here for about an hour, and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. All right, you guys. So, oh, Maru's going to do some stitching too. That's great. Yes, so we did some English paper piecing. So we have the pieces in the back here. Uh, we have the little holes punched in there so later we can pop them out easily. We can just stick a needle in there and pop them out or a pin. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, we have to make three more of these and those will be the center part of our, our shape. And I'll show you guys that now. So thanks again for joining me. All right. Here we go. All right, you guys, here we are this evening. So here is the winter flower. Oh, Joe got her embroidery kit for next week. Yes, so you guys, on Monday, we'll be starting our embroidery of the month, the fussels uh, and the scrappy. Uh, we're going to do the couching technique, so that'll be kind of fun uh, of embroidery. All right, so this is what we're doing tonight. It is English paper pieced. And again, that's we have all of our little uh, our little template pieces that we made, and uh, here they are. We have three of them in here, and we've sewn them together. So if you guys remember this on these two, we did the whip stitch, and this one we did a ladder stitch. And you can see you can kind of see all the little stitches for the whip stitch, but it's more hidden for the ladder stitch. Although I actually kind of like the whip stitch, and it's more relaxing for me, so I'm probably going to continue with that whip stitch. But there you can see. The difference. I mean, it's really noticeable, actually. Um, so, do whatever you like. Uh, so this this piece is, if I have it like right here, it's like this section right there. So that's two A pieces and a B piece together. And we need to make uh, four or three more of these, and then we'll start putting them together. And I actually might start putting them together as we go. That'll be kind of fun. So all right, let's get going on that. That is the plan. I'm gonna do it all. Um, with the, uh, just the thread basting way tonight. So here you can tell on the back, we have to fold over, fold over the edges of the fabric and we need to hold them in place for a period of time while we stitch them together, right? So we did thread basting on these two and then this one you can see we just glued it down. So there's glue basting and thread basting. Uh, I think I'm gonna do the thread basting some more. It's just relaxing. I kind of like it. So, all right, I have some thread here. I'm gonna cut a longer piece than I have in the past because I think I'm gonna try and do several of these um, all at the same time. So let's see how that goes. Let's see, we got all the gadgets tonight. So let's run it through our um, thread conditioner, especially since I have a longer piece of thread. This should just kind of keep it from twisting upon itself and it smells good. That's the main reason. Just makes the process a little bit more enjoyable. Oh, I really did make this long. Maybe a little too long, but we will see. We'll see how easy it is. So I hope all of you had a lovely Thursday. Chad came to the door again today, Chad Kitty. So we gotta let him inside. He's an outdoor kitty. Um, if, if you know Chad, who I'm talking about, I, that's, I posted him in, in the Facebook page. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie a little knot here to get started. But, um, He's an outdoor cat, so he's outdoors during all of this really cold weather and everything. And he's got tons of fur and everything. He's fine. But um, he'll pop by the door and there's a window towards the bottom of the door that, you know, he can see in. I call it People TV. He came over to watch People TV and then I'll let him in every once in a while. Oh, it's cold, but he's totally fine. He does have... He can go into the garage um, 
and he's got like food and a place in the garage if it gets really cold but he has so much like he he turns into a totally different shape really in the winter um you know this is not a I'm gonna start up here. This seems like an easier angle to start out with. We're, let's start right in the middle here. And you know what? I think I'm gonna... Oh, I know why this is feeling weird. I didn't I didn't thread base this one yesterday. I glue basted it, but I'm gonna glue this one down just so it can stay in place while I, while I work here. And then maybe I'll try and get that glue off of there a little bit later. But yeah, so he's got his big fur coat on and all of his winter fat on and he's totally fine. But he still likes coming inside because cause why not? Alright. Oh, but yeah, Grace, who's on here, um, sometimes she sent, uh, sent Chad a valentine, so <laughs> that was Chad. Uh, the picture from the day was Chad with his little Valentine gift. All right, so I went around this first part. Oh, you're having a oh, you're having a hard time keeping the outside cat in. Yeah, I mean, if it's a legit outside cat, I mean, this was always an outside cat. Um, you know, he act, he lives he likes lives in the wood pile sort of thing. Um, even though he has, he has the garage and he has, you know, water and food and a bed and shelter and all that there, he still kind of hangs out in different wood piles and he'll honor us with his presence every once in a while, uh, during the day and he's more of a wild animal unless, unless he's ready to get, get pet, all the pets, then he'll, then he'll, he actually does a stretch so if he stretches beforehand, then you know he's, he wants to get all the pets. If not, then he might smack you. He's funny though, I like him. But yeah, when I'm visiting my parents, I get to see Chad Kitty. Oh, I keep moving kind of funny for you guys. Here you go. All right, so I'm just going around each corner. We're folding over the edge. And I feel like I'm warming up again um, today. It like, takes a little getting into it again. Uh, I think the glue basting is pretty easy. We're kind of sliding around a, a little bit with um, this thread basting, but it's going fine. I'm just folding over the next edge and then where the fold is, I'm just tacking down that fold I'm just jumping from the last place to the next place, tacking down this fold, just going around it twice. And that's all we need is to hold down this edge for the short amount of time that we need to uh, stitch it together. I don't know if it's really a short amount of time, but we just need to hold it in place temporarily. So you can kind of see we got our edges started here, getting our shape here. So it's maybe a little loose up here. We'll pull on that when we get back to the top. Um, but I'm just keeping going around, folding one edge. This is why you need like a good card stock to do this. I, I'm just using a, like a manila folder basically, an old file folder. And I think this is the first time I'm doing the thread basting with this shape and I do think it was working a little easier on the other shape, the A pieces versus the B pieces. But we're giving it a try today. All right, jump over to the end here. I think I'm just gonna fold this out of the way for now to tack it down. Get over there. So it was another cold day here, you guys. Um, still in the negatives with wind chill. All right, I went around this one three times just to 
uh, for sure lock it in place there. But there we go, there's our shape. Uh, I think I'll just trim that. There we go. Uh, we'll just let this one lie here for a moment. So I'm gonna do that with, with uh, my two other pieces, the two A pieces now. And then once those are done, we will get them all together here. So see, I, can, I did a better job here at thread basting this bottom than the glue basting. The glue basting is kind of coming apart, which is fine. Um, we'll just fix that once we get that far. Uh, that's gonna be no, no problem at all. I'm not worried about that. Um, it'll be a little while till we're doing that anyway. Actually, you know, when we're done with this one tonight, we could actually stitch it to this one. Maybe we'll do that. Then, um, then we can form that shape a little bit more. Yeah, let's do that. All right, I'm gonna just tie another knot here. I think that worked well for me. Okay, so, oh, one last thing. I'm uh, putting the right side of the fabric down and the uh, uh, wrong side so is going up. Like the side that I labeled will go up. So that's kind of like the wrong side and the right side. So you wanna just be consistent with that. All right, let's just kind of start on a short, easy side, I think. So folding the one side, then folding the next. Okay, actually, I'm going to start right here. This is more of this is more of a 90 degree angle. It's a little bit easier to do wider angles first. So let's. Let's do that. It's easier to do a wider angle because when you fold this side over, it's gonna be on the inside. If it's a skinnier angle, it's gonna be on the outside. And this is just an easier way to start. All right, I'm gonna go around that spot like three times too. Oh, uh, you know, uh, Noretta, I totally hear you on that. I, you know, even with me, I, this kind of, this is kind of tough. So I would suggest doing the, um, thread or not the thread basting the glue basting and then once we get to stitching them together I'll, I'll show you uh, um, ugh, that's just gonna stick up uh, using a wonder clip for this will help it'll help with like the pinching uh, motion that's the part that I find difficult um, it is d heavily hand worked and and actually um, if I'm comparing this to uh, like hand quilting or if I'm comparing it to needle turn applique like those are both like heavily or even like embroidery like a bunch of hand pieces I would say this is probably the most difficult for me as far as um, holding things and hurting the hands a little bit and it's this pinching motion that I'm doing with this hand so um, the glue method would kind of eliminate that and then you can then you can um, use a wonder clip to help hold things up later and we'll be we'll be doing that next once I get my last last one of these prepped And one last little corner. Fold that down. Now this is gonna, this one's gonna be like, we're gonna have like this little wing here. That's totally fine. That will be completely hidden once we stitch it together. So I'm gonna just, where I can see the edge here, I'm gonna go around that. So from tangled now. Get on this side. There we are. So I'll go around this spot three times again. Like kind of like final locking this in place. All right, to go even faster, this is like a little tip. It's, it's kind of can get bulky and weird, but I don't actually have to cut this. I can just move on to the next piece and if you have a ton of pieces and you get in the rhythm of doing this and you just have them all kind of dangling and connected, uh, it does go faster. It can be a little goofy, but it can can speed up the process a hair. 
And then we can just start stitching them together right away too, which I think we'll do. And I don't have to switch threads. Oh, I do. I was almost pulling this. Oop, shoot. Almost, oh, pulling the other way. I, I almost pulled the thread out of the needle, so I wanted to address that quick. There, so I'll just, um, you know, leave a little end here for me and uh, let that dangle while I work on this one. I think we'll go over this one more here. All right. We'll rotate around this piece and then uh, we'll be good to go. We can start putting them together then. Ooh, I think I slipped a little on this weir. We got a big seam allowance here. I'm not gonna have a big seam allowance at the bottom here. Oh, we might be fine still. It'll be enough. Okay, two, rotate. Tighten that up. All right, one more, and then we can start stitching these guys together. I'm ready. That's the that's the part I like. This part I could kind of do without. Oops. Let's do. Cross over this edge, and then fold that over. Again, I'm not going to worry about that big tail. We'll do three times here. All right, so now I can move right on to um, sewing these together. I don't even have to snip that, this like loop that, you know, that's dangling these together. I don't even have to bother about that. I can just start stitching them together. Um, so I'm gonna, it's gonna go like this and then this guy is gonna go in here like this. So I think what I'm gonna do, since my thread's all the way down here already, I'm gonna just stitch up this edge and then maybe we'll, we'll see how much thread I have left, but maybe I'll just go up the side here right away with the same stitching and then I'll jump back and do this last bit. Or maybe I'll go up to here and then I'll jump over to here and we'll do that. That, that kind of makes more sense. Hey Luann, thanks for joining us. All right, so I'm gonna put these right sides together. So here is where I would um, get a, a clip. So, and that's gonna help with the handwork of it all. Um, for sure. Like I, I can already feel um, like in here from from just prepping these pieces. So if that, like I said, if that's the case, do the glue basting, then you're not picking this up or moving around at all. Maybe the next one will glue baste the whole thing. So, all right, I'm going to just put that clip down there so it's out of my way and we're going to stitch up there. And this is plenty uh, to hold this in place. So now I don't have to make this pinching motion. I just can kind of hold it uh, gently and um, it, it'll still be together, so that's that's nice. And maybe I'll put another one down, down at the bottom here, just to hold this end a little bit more. There we are. Okay, so we are stitching up along this edge here. Uh, this loop is still here. That's not gonna matter. I'm gonna just leave it. So I'm gonna start on these ends. So here's our big flaps. I'm just gonna just move it out of the way. All I'm concerned with is these ends and we're going to stitch those together. So I'm going to do that knicker knot again. That just is kind of like what makes a little knot, a little like tighter knot than just doing loops at the end. So I'm going to go around once. Okay. And then I'm going to stick it in a little bit there and at the end of the thread down here, oh, I kind of don't have too much thread for this, but, um, by the eye of the needle, um, that thread, we're going to wrap around the front of the needle. And then the other thread that was um, coming towards the fabric, the part coming out of the fabric, we're gonna wrap around as well. Kind of weird. Uh, and then we're gonna pull it. It makes kind of like this little squiggle figure figure eight there out of the thread. And that's our that's our knicker knot. And that's just gonna hold that nice and tight in place. I can tell I my thread's getting a little loopy and stuff because we've used it for all of this so far. So it's 
it's um going through the ringer a little bit. All right, we've made that knot. Now I'm just gonna go down the line. I'm gonna do that whip stitch. I like doing that. So I'm just grabbing a couple threads on the edge of, of these, both edges, and I'm always starting at the bottom and going to the top. Oh, are those um, some other people? I think uh, someone here last night said that they go from the top to the bottom. I should try that on one of them. See if I see if I like it a little bit more. So little bitty stitches all the way along the edge. This is the relaxing part. So I'm not gripping nearly as hard anymore. I can just kind of like rest this here. You could actually even clip this to something and then like remove this hand altogether, probably to some extent. I think you'd probably actually have to hold it a hair, but you could take more pressure off the hand, I'm, I'm thinking. But um, definitely having these clips holding it together a little bit is taking a lot of the pressure off my hands. Do you drop your needle and let it Oh, I do sometimes. So like kind of like letting it dangle a little bit here. I think, um, I'm not sure it's that twisted though. I think it's just, uh, so this is one of the reasons that I don't usually get a long piece of thread. Um, when you have a long piece of thread, not only are you like pulling your arm way back, so that can be repetitive stress, but that thread is going through your fabric a lot of times, more times than if you're using a shorter piece of thread. So each time it's going through that thread, it's like getting, it's like there's friction involved, right? So it's kind of wearing away the thread, you know, each time you go just like minutely, every time you go through the fabric. So if you have a long piece, you're gonna just keep damaging it more and more. So um, that's one reason to just do some shorter pieces, but Every right, once in a while you just get on a kick to do longer pieces. But I think that's kind of what's happening when it gets a little twisty and all kind of bent and stuff. Um, it's just because it's been going through a bunch of times. And you're moving your needle each time. So my needle might have been down here a little bit more. So we're kind of making that point a little weak from it being by the eye of the needle. Um, so I think there's there's some of that happening. And actually, I think once I get done with when, when I get to here I think I'm gonna get a new piece of thread because I don't think this is gonna get me the rest of the way so we'll just start a new one I think I might get a longish one again because I think I'm gonna try and stitch it to here right away in the directions it has a stitch all four of these groups first and then sew them together but I don't see why we couldn't just like you know sew this one to this one and maybe we do the next one by itself and then sew that one to the second one and then sew the two pairs together. Uh, but I don't see why we couldn't just move ahead and sew this two right away. All right, here I'm gonna put another knicker knot. So I'm gonna go, oops, got caught on the end here. Ooh, got caught all over the place. On my little, uh, well, this I don't need here anymore. We got that side sewed, sewn. All right, so knick or not, my thread's a little short for this now, but we're gonna give it a try. So we have the, the end that is, oh, does the thread color matter? I would try and match um, match your fabric as much as you can. I thought this was pretty close. I'm borrowing whatever my mom had too, so I'm just using this. And uh, this is just like, it's a little dark, but it, it's a general kind of nice neutral thread. So um, I don't think you can, I think it looks pretty nice with, with this thread. It's not like I'm doing like a bright red or something that you could tell a little bit more. All right, so you have the thread that's coming out of the fabric that's right here, and then you have the thread that's in your eye of the, your needle, right? So you're gonna wrap the eye of the needle one around from the back to the front of um, your needle, and then you're gonna do the same thing with the part that was coming out of the fabric. You're gonna go the opposite direction. So I went from left to right with the eye of the needle, so I'm gonna go from right to left and then back uh, towards me um, with the fabric, the part coming out of the fabric, and then you can just pull through. It makes that little squiggle. That's what we're, that's what we're going for here. I don't know if you guys can see that. And that's our knot. So that's, that's good. And like I said, I think I'm gonna end this thread now. I'm just gonna tuck it in one of these seams just to kind of move it out of the way. Uh, Cause it's, I don't think it's long enough to, it's just gonna get annoying. Like I'm gonna keep on accidentally like pulling out the thread from the eye of the needle and, and all that. So, all right, we can take this, this uh, piece off as well, this uh, clip. 
And uh, we can check out our first seam of the night. Oh, it's like a little heart. But you can tell now, like, you know, these, these extra flaps, those are just gonna be part of the back. You're not gonna see them at all. We just tuck them out of the way and they just hang out back there. You know, and when we, you know, even this one right here, you know, we'll, we'll assemble it like this and they'll all just be hanging out hanging out back here. We can trim them so they're a little shorter, but I probably wouldn't do that till I'm done. I don't think there's any really real reason to. All right, so now we got this piece to do. So I think uh, we'll just start on one end and go to the other. I think we'll start on this side. So I'm gonna just kind of align those two edges with the right sides together again. I'm really focusing on that point so those points match, the edges match, and let's just Plop a clip in there, and yeah, I probably don't need another one. Okay, let's get another piece of thread. And uh, I'll get it a little long again. I think I'm gonna sew, sew these two together right away. I think that'd be fun to see if I can see what two of these look like together. Oh, actually, it's these these pieces that sew together. So, so right here I would sew together, not not this. That's later. <laughs> um, glad I noticed that because that would have been that would have been wrong. We would have had to redo it. Oh, and that would have been a bummer to find out in the middle of it. So um, that is not what we sew. Okay, got our little thread conditioner going. That just kind of adds a layer of protection, really, and it helps with that wear. And it smells good. So it's just basically beeswax, I think. All right, I think we'll just start with the knicker knot. I'm not gonna tie a knot, so, all right. Oh, here, this is what we're sewing together. Let's kind of line that up again. I think I moved it. This looks a little high. All right. So I'm gonna wrap it around once, and then we'll do that knicker knot. So I'm just gonna leave a little end like that. I'll go around once, I think, and then I'll do the knicker knot. All right, so I'm going in. So for this knot, again, I have the the thread that's coming right out of the fabric here, and then I have the thread that's hanging from the needle. We're gonna wrap the thread from the needle around the back and of the needle and then to the front from left to right, and then we're gonna grab the thread that was attached to the fabric and go around the back from the right to the left, um, bring it to the front, and so we just basically switch sides with those and um, pull it tight. Got our little figure eight. There we go. And we'll just cruise down the edge here. I am gonna put a knicker knot right at this point, and then we're gonna have to like fold this a little bit and bend it a little out of place to get um, to get this next seam to line up because we gotta get this seam to line up here. So we're gonna have to bend our pieces a little bit to get there, but that's fine. That's why it's just little cardboard pieces or little um, folder pieces, old an old folder I cut up on uh, Monday. But this is the part I like, these nice little whip stitches. I was gonna try it from above. Maybe, maybe I'll try that for the next bit. Like I'm going from bottom to top each time and I know, um, I think it was Noeline maybe, um, said that she went from top to bottom, so I'll, I'll give that a try. Getting there. All 
All right, so now this one I'm gonna do that nick or not. Um, all right, so this one left to right and around, this one right to left and around. Okay. So let's undo this. We can lift this up and see how we're how we're doing here. But now we got to get this seam together. So this is where I'm going to kind of bend this piece a little bit. This one's going to take a little finagling. It's going to want to kind of open up a little bit. This is I'm definitely going to want to clip to hold hold this together. Plop it right there, I think. And all right. Um, so I'm going to do the knicker knot there again and work this way. So I really had to bend this one quite a bit to line it up, but it'll go back. Okay, let's start with that knicker knot here. So around and around. Great. And just down the edge again. Grab that edge a little bit more. I want to make sure that I'm grabbing like a, more than one of these little fabric threads, maybe two or so, two or three. This is relaxing though. This is definitely the part that I like the best out of English paper piecing. It'd be nice to just have all the pieces prepped. And I think that's what a lot of people do. They prep all of their pieces and then they can just hang out and stitch, stitch them together. All right, maybe three more stitches or so. All right, here we go. Let's do that knicker knot. Call it a day on this segment. Uh-oh, where's that thread? There we go. All right, let's separate that. And there we can flatten out again. And there is this piece. So now I'm gonna go ahead right away and stitch it to this piece and let's see okay my thread ended right here let's see I think we're let's just double check yeah we're like so <laughs> so these these uh a pieces go around in the middle here so we're just like this um so I'm gonna fold these edges together and we'll start right here and sew down this way and we'll end up at this point down here and we'll have two of these kind of groupings together. That'll be nice. Moving along. We are actually, okay, and I'm just gonna jump from, you know, where I was up here. I'm gonna just jump right on down here right away. We're gonna have all these weird little jumps, but those are gonna be hidden on the back. Um, we do not have to care about those, I don't think. So I'm gonna go around this once. And um, this one I think I might actually want a little bit longer because this has to open up. I might just actually trim that eventually, but for now I'm gonna let it be a little bit larger. All right, let's do that knicker knot. Oh, and I was gonna go from top to bottom this time. Let's see, let's see what that's like. I think it's gonna feel pretty awkward in my hands, but but we'll see. All right, so up, so you could almost hold it like this. Actually, uh, is that comfortable? For me, it's all about like what's the most natural and comfortable, and obviously that sometimes takes some practice. All right, so I'm do, going um, from top to bottom now, going towards me. And oh yeah, I do kind of like this already. I thought it was gonna feel super awkward, but it's not really too awkward. Hmm. I'd have to do it a few times to have it feel like super natural. But it's not as weird as I thought it was gonna be.
And we got all these little flaps down here again, but they're not gonna they're not gonna get in our way. They will be just fine. Yeah, you can almost hold it straight at you. Eh, I'd be interested to hearing what grip you guys like best um, once you start doing this or if you've done a lot of paper piecing. All right, so now I'm gonna just move these flaps out of the way. And we're just gonna still focus on that edge, the two edges. Oh, let's get rid of that. That's what's in my way. Slow motion sewing, that's what we're doing for sure. All right, so here's where I'm gonna do that knicker knot. Okay, so I think I gotta hold it this way again for me to get it right in my head. Oh, I think we're gonna go in the other direction now. This one's gonna go from right to left and this one's gonna go left to right just because I'm backwards here. All right, and that's it. Let's just tuck this thread away. Trim that. So if we want, we can trim these little uh, loops that we have and let's see what we got oh pretty it is coming together yeah so this is half of uh that kind of bottom segment obviously we have a ton here i just want to peek let's um we need a a d r piece and we need a d piece and then we need a c piece so this will go like right here oh but this way they're different there, so they're like that. DR, you go here. And this guy goes here. So this folds over here. Remember we kinda, I gotta glue that down again or something. So it's actually like so. So we have to do all those pieces yet too. So we have half of this section done. And I wanna start at least the next bit here. I think I have to cut out fabric for that yet. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll at least get our next little segment here started and, uh, um, then we'll move on to here. So the D fabric, these two pieces, that's going to be the white. So I was looking forever for like trying to figure what, to, uh, what, what to do with that yesterday. But then, then, um, you guys mentioned that, oh, are you supposed to have white and all of it? And, and yeah, so I have, um, some white. So one of my rules for myself for this quilt was I was going to try and have white in every block and it was going to be like the border if if there was a clear border so here's just so you guys just a reminder of what we're doing here here is the piece here so we got like this segment here done um so we got like half of it minus like these little little edges minus this triangle there so that's well on our way. It's actually quite a bit further than I thought we'd be at this point. So that's nice. Um, I think um, I think how we'll do the next bit is, I'll, you know, we have two more of these kind of groupings to do this one and this one. Um, I'm going to do them individually, like how we've been doing and then sewing. I think I'm going to sew it together again like this. And then we'll sew the two groupings together. So when I finish the next one, I'm not going to sew it on right away like what I just did. I'm going to do the whole, a whole another two section piece like this. Because then we'll just have one straight line to stitch down. And I think that'll be easier than me adding another segment on here. And then trying to tuck in the last segment. We'll just do another grouping like this. So we'll start that now. And uh, um, I think, I don't know. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to finish this middle section by the end of tomorrow. So I think that's great. That would be a great place to let this rest for the week or for the month really. Um, and then in next month we can, when we, the second week of the month when we work on this again, we can do these, these corner bits and um, we'll probably get that done um, the next time. So great, so let's keep going on this. He can just chill out right there. Um, here where you can see it still. And these guys can go. And 
my needle I'm gonna put out of the way for a sec. So we did cut the other B pieces. So we got a B piece right here. I suppose let's just take care of that right away. I wonder if I have enough thread on my needle for that. Maybe just barely. Let's let's see if I can get it with the needle that I or the thread that I have. And then I think I need to actually cut out more fabric for um, these A pieces. And I, I might just go do that right away, like cut for all the rest of it. I think that'd be an easy, easy enough thing to just get done. Then the only thing, oh, we still have to mess with, oh yeah, the star. So the, um, oh, so we're not quite done with the star fabric. I was thinking we were done with the star fabric. I better keep that out. Uh, we need that for all our C pieces. Um, so I'll just leave it out for next time we work on it. I'm not gonna cut out those pieces yet, I don't think. Eh, we might, I'm undecided, clearly. All right, let's, this is sometimes easier when you glue it to the fabric in the middle, then it just doesn't move around when you do this part, but let's get the hang of it. So we're back at the, ah, shoot, see, I was afraid that was gonna happen if I started trying to do this. I always, when I use too little thread, I always end up pulling the thread out of the needle, which is, was really annoying at this spot because we had just folded this over. These are all gonna be not lined up anymore. Get up there. Get that second loop. There, that first one's maybe the hardest. All right, next corner. Just tacking it down. Yeah, hexagons are probably the most common way to start this, which is great because they're they're easy to fold the fabric around uh, because of the shape. It's got all. Um, obtuse like angles uh, which is great like all the angles are bigger than 90 degrees which makes it way easier to do this thread basting so um, the hexagons are a great way to start and they're all the same and they all fit together real nice and cute it's a good um, good English paper piecing thing okay I'm not in here very well little bit right here. Oh, I was maybe gonna glue baste this. Maybe tomorrow we'll do glue basting. Today it will be thread basting. Tomorrow we'll do glue basting. You can kind of see it, the difference. I think this part goes much faster with glue basting and it's probably a whole lot easier on the hands. But this is just kind of sometimes more fun than you're not using any extra little tool. It's just your Needle and thread. Ow. See, I just should know myself better. I know that I don't do well when the thread gets this short. Come on. There we go. Two more. Oh no, just, oh yeah, two more. For these little, little bitty angles.
All right, last up. It's just gonna move this a little bit out of the way to tack it down. Uh, yeah, I'll be happy to not have this short little piece of thread anymore. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm just going to trim that edge. All right, so there's our uh, another little B piece for us. So uh, I need more fabric for the A pieces. So I'm just going to cut. We really need like, what, three of these? Yeah, three more of these. So let's just let's just get them trimmed. What are you wrapping the cloth around? Oh, just popped in. Oh, so these are little templates that we made. So this is it's just a manila folder or not a manila folder, but like you know, like a file folder, an old file folder that I cut up. So these are the templates from uh, the Splendid Sampler 2 book. They're in the back of the book here. So I just traced it onto a piece of, um, just a piece of just typing paper or whatever, printer paper. I'm gonna, I didn't really press these, so I'm gonna go down here. Uh, and uh, then trace the amount that I needed onto all these, this, these manila, a manila folder. And that's it. So just a little piece of paper. You want um, you want it to be stiff enough. I think actually a postcard is my favorite thing to use. Um, Cause it's a little stiffer than this, but you do want like the stiffness and that sharp edge. I bet those D pieces have to be glued. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. So the D pieces actually, so this is a D piece. They're going off the edge. So the edge we can just let hang. I really only need to fold over these two edges. So yeah, you know what? Glue basting probably would be really good for that. All right, I'm gonna cut out one more piece. Then we'll have, then we'll actually be done with this fabric, which will be nice. Oh, there's kind of quite the big cut in there. Maybe I should move a little bit. So I'm doing a, you know, a bit more than a quarter inch, just in case it moves around and slides on us. This we can just kind of lop off. All right, now I'm done with this fabric. Ooh, I, this guy was running away from me. He needs to, I need him. He can stay with the rest of them. All right, I'm just folding up, folding up my fabric that I don't need anymore. Getting that out of the way. Got fuzzles hanging all over me here. Get those out of the way. Okay, and uh, geez, more fuzzles. So I only need the one right now. These two I'm gonna set aside with my last B piece here. Those can just chill out there. Wait a sec, I need one more. Ugh, I need one more, boo. <laughs> Come back here, fabric. All right. That wasn't gonna get me very far. I don't know why I was thinking I just needed a three. That was pretty weird. All right. Now we'll fold this up. All right, so these two, and then here's our B piece. So I think um, maybe I'll have time to wrap my thread around, around this one. So let's get another piece. Let's get a longer piece again so we can sew this whole thing together. I'll run it through the thread conditioner again. All right, and we gotta put the wrong side down and this side up like so. Find my needle again.
Okay, and I'm gonna tie a little knot in the end here again. All right, A piece, let's do it. So I'm really like going all the way to the edge here and then trying to fold that whole thing over on the next edge. We'll do this first one. Oh, twice is fine when I have that knot. We'll just move this a little bit that way again. And then I'll jump and do the next one with the same thread right away. Oh, then all the pieces will be prepped. I'll feel happy about that. Well, all the pieces for this next segment. So some people, when they do this, they actually unpurpose stitched through the papers, but I don't know. I don't really get that, because then how do you get it off? And that's got to be tough, like, to go stab all the way through the paper, I would think. Have not tried it that way. All right, so there's the one. He's ready to go. Let's just let that dangle, and let's do our last one. So this is our last... No, it's not. We have a whole nother segment to do. I was thinking this is our last A piece, but it is not. We have a whole nother section to go. Getting ahead of myself again. Oh, yeah, this is how we did last time. Kind of like that way. Just let that one hang. Whoa! Hang a little bit more than that. I suppose we'll go around this one more time. Then it won't, that won't pull up like that again. Out of my way! What's weird there? I'm like, there's an extra thread there. So my, uh, I uh, got caught up to the dangling part of my thread. All right, two more stitches, two more corners, and I think we will call it at that. We will start stitching this up tomorrow. Oh, I might have enough time to do one of these rows, use up this thread. this spot three times yeah this is definitely 
a project to take hand breaks for sure. Like that, these, like tying it around um, the edges like this, that's that's hard on my hands too. Um, yeah, so let's, remind me tomorrow, let's try the thread basting, give that a go. I think I am gonna just try, I think we have enough time. I'm gonna stitch these two uh, bits together. So let's let's just fold this in half. You know, this, this um, thread's a little bit long. This jump, or a little too short, I'm gonna just snip it. They can be separated. It's just it's just quick when you're putting things together. All right, right sides together. All right, I'm gonna put the clip on this side. All right, All right here. We'll get our we'll go around once and then get do our knick or knot. And I'll, I, I'm approaching that part of the thread where I, where I kind of don't like the length anymore. Oh, but we have a lot of slack on here. There, I just made it a little bit longer. All right, that's our knicker knot. And I'm going underneath again. Well, fine. I'm going underneath this time. I went above from top to bottom last time. We'll go bottom to top. I keep getting caught on that end. I need to rely on those clips a little bit more. I got to keep reminding myself I don't actually have to hold it very hard if that clip is there. I, I barely have to, it can just float in my hand, really. It's a recent thing for me, like, oh, just clip them in there in place. So my body's not, that's not my default to just have a relaxed hand holding this yet. So I got to practice that. Just chill out hand. Oh, this looked like this took like half a minute to stitch all the way up here. That's not bad at all. But I think I will stop after stitching this just because then I'll, I'll have to start a whole new thing of thread and everything, I think. We'll do that fresh tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the last day that I'm on location here. So on starting on Monday again, I'll be, um, I will be on Facebook again. So YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So you can pick what you like again, but I do appreciate you stopping over here on, on YouTube um, these past couple days. All right, Nick or not. There we go. Just gonna tuck in this end. So I don't really need to be doing that. Trim that excess off. All right, this is the part I like. Open that up. Fun. All right, so tonight we, or tomorrow we will um, stitch it on there. So then here we can start seeing. These. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stitch it on right away. I will just leave this one. Then I'll do the whole next one and then uh, make it a double like this. And then I'll put the two doubles together because uh, then we just have like one line to stitch up. That should be pretty easy. Um, yeah, and we'll have this funny little star here by the end of tomorrow. All right, you guys. I'm gonna flip you around here. <laughs> There's the ceiling. Hello. So. Uh, Thank you guys again for joining me here tonight. It's coming out awfully cute here. Uh, definitely further than last night. And uh, these guys will be going on there. Uh, it's a process for sure. Oh wait, they'll be going on like this. <laughs> uh, but it, it's fun. And this is definitely one of those just chill out, slow stitching. You know, don't pretend you're gonna get this done uh, anytime, you know, soon and just, um, 
enjoyed the process really for this one. Oh, Amy says thanks for the Chad Kitty videos. <laughs> there might be one more tomorrow if I see him. Um, I think I have one left on my camera roll, so hopefully he'll stop by and he'll uh, look in the window and watch some People TV <laughs> again tomorrow. I'll, I'll have to take, it's funny, my parents have um, this door where there's like a little window like this big. It's kind of like four windows going up the door, but the, the bottom one happens to be perfect for Chad to look in and he just watches watches people all day <laughs> he's watching people tv so maybe i'll catch him there tomorrow and we'll get a little video of that <laughs> all right oh colleen you're sweet thank you very much all right i will see all of you tomorrow thank you again uh 8 30 central time p.m central time tomorrow here on youtube penguin and fish on youtube have a great evening good night